All right, we're back. Take two. Thanks so much for being patient. Hopefully we're good with the iPhone this time. Please let us know if you're just joining us, if the phone is still horizontal. We'll try to stay this way this time. Well, hopefully the iPhone won't have a mind of its own again and decide to flip on us. But welcome if you're just joining us. Olivia Reiner, Pete Doherty, we are here in the uh, Press Gazette newsroom and we are reacting to the news that Matt LaFleur has been offered the Packers head coaching gig. And as I was saying before, before we were interrupted by the iPhone having a bit of a mind of its own, Ryan and I spoke last week about whether or not this would be a short process, a long process. And when I even brought it up, Ryan's knee jerk reaction was, this is going to be a long process. It has to be a long process. There's, I believe there are 12 known candidates and already the Packers have narrowed it down to seemingly one candidate. Yeah. What is your initial reaction here? So he's, um, you know, LaFleur is, you know, you got to call him, he was a dark horse candidate, but he does fit, you know, I, I just looked, they, they interviewed five guys who had coached quarterbacks in the NFL at some time in their career. So that had to be a big part of their thinking, you know, someone who could come in and connect with Aaron Rodgers one way or another, either by being a real strong personality and getting him to play the way he wants or someone who can just work, you know, work with them collaboratively. Um, so this guy fits that profile and you've got the Mike, Sh uh, the, the Kyle Shanahan, um, McVay connections. He worked his entire, uh, uh, this guy's LaFleur's career, is, the whole career has been with either Shanahan, McVay or both of them. I think all three worked together for four years in Washington. Uh, and those are the two, you know, big cutting edge offensive guys for the last couple of years in the NFL. So the, the Packers obviously thought they, there was something there. I'm sure they got good recommendations from those guys and then something or many things that LaFleur said in the interview must have uh, struck home with uh, Mark Murphy and Brian Gutekunst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, lots to discuss here, guys. If you have any questions, please, we'd love to field them and uh, just chat a little bit with some of you guys. I saw someone earlier point out that Mike Pettin may be kept by LaFleur. It or sounds like it. several of us on staff have talked to people who said that uh, LaFleur went into his interview with uh, Pettin on his list of potential defensive uh, coordinators. It sounds like, so it does sound like Pettin will stay. I'm sure that didn't hurt his argument at all. Now they don't have to start over on offense or on defense also. They've got a year with Pettin in that uh, scheme. Uh, he's gotten into his players for a season, so they won't have to start from scratch on defense. Um, you have to think that it, at minimum didn't hurt LaFleur's case at all, and that might have helped it some. Mm -hmm. So if Pettin does stay, how does that impact, or whether or not he stays, how would that impact some of his assistants? Yeah, I, you know, um, I would think that they would sit and talk about, you know, which ones Pettin wants to keep. LaFleur might have a quality control guy at Tennessee or who he knew in Los Angeles on, def on the defensive side that he would want to get on the staff. Aaron Nagler joins us. Hello, Aaron. Hi. Um, so they, you know, he, LaFleur might have a couple of people he wants on this staff, and it's his coaching staff, so he's going to put on who he wants. But uh, you would have to think with what, you know, what they went through last year and Pettin has worked with all these guys, at least a couple of the assistants on defense will be retained and maybe almost all of them. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a, a long resume he's got there, especially in terms of some of the guys that he's coached in his career, including Deshaun Kaiser at Notre Dame, including Kirk Cousins with the Washington Redskins, RG3. So there's some bigger names there, Donovan McNabb <laughs> um, at some point when he was Matt, with the Redskins. Matt Ryan with Atlanta. Right. So he's worked with a lot of different, kind. you know, uh, RG3 is a, a running quarterback. Matt Ryan's the exact opposite, a pure pocket passer. Uh, with Rodgers, he'll be working with something in between. You know, he can do both. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, I mean, that's going to be the two things that will determine whether he succeeds or not is, can he get Rodgers playing at that high level again? And does he have the stuff that a head coach needs to build the chemistry in the locker room and with, his, uh, with the coaching staff? All those things are important. He's got to manage a lot of things. And does he have, is he a good decision maker and a good manager in that way? Travis wants to know if LaFleur will be a good fit for not only the Packers, but also Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and, and who knows? Um, we'll, we'll find out, it'll, you know, it'll take a year or two. Uh, you could see, you know, uh, when McCarthy came in, Brett Favre played better for him almost right off the bat than he did with for Mike Sherman. So, you know, maybe we'll have a good indication by... Uh, you know, three or four weeks in the season, we might have uh, uh, next season. We might have a sense of that, but there's no. We're we're all just guessing. We don't. No, no one knows how that's going to go. 
So what does this hire say about the direction the Packers management wants to go with this offense, with LaFleur having so much experience with McVay and Shanahan? Yeah, they, you know, they went with, you know, they could have, McDaniels was one of the candidates. They had a couple older guys who've been in the league longer. They Obviously, there was something they liked about having one of these young, cutting-edge guys. Now, it doesn't mean the guy's going to succeed. Uh, these guys fail all the time, so we won't know until he sits in the captain's chair. But they obviously thought it was important. And he does. it is a basically a West Coast system. Now, all these West Coast systems have morphed into different offenses. But the basic language is the same. I was talking with an assistant coach for another team about this last week. And he said that, you know, so at least if they hire a guy with a West Coast background, he and Rodgers at least will be able to speak the same offensive language, and that'll e make the transition a lot easier. For instance, when Brett Favre went to the Jets, that was a whole different system. He goes to the Vikings. Daryl Bevel ran a West Coast-based system, and this guy thought that, that was one of the reasons why Favre played better for the Vikings than for the Jets. Mm -hmm. Lots of folks asking about the next offensive coordinator, including Katie just asked. Yeah, um, don't know. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't make those decisions. I would assume he's working on a staff right now, right? He's probably calling assistant coaches around the league that he wants to hire, and um, they're, they're probably doing those things as we speak. So LaFleur was calling plays with the Titans. That was his first job as a play caller. Correct. Would you expect to see him calling plays here, here in Green Bay? You know, if, I, I guess you'd have to bet on it. You know, this is one of the reasons they hired him, right? So, uh, and it's his offense, uh, so I would think uh, his first shot as a head coaching uh, in the head coaching position, he's going to want to have that control. So uh, we don't know for sure, but uh, the smart money would say that he'll be calling his own plays. Mm -hmm. All right, um, we're going to take some more questions here. I saw one earlier. We're scrolling up. Um, just to be clear, Sarah, uh, Sarah asks if we know when the press conference is. This has not yet been made official by the Packers. So we do not know when the press conference no, is. No, we, we yet. don't. Um, my, you know, without knowing, I'd maybe Wednesday would be the logical day for it, uh, but maybe they'll spring something on us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, so for everyone asking about a press conference, not sure yet, but likely sometime this week if this news is already out. Yeah, no time. Somebody's asking about the contract. No, no known terms yet. Uh, I would think the going rate for a new coach, uh, you would think it would be a four-year deal maybe for this young a guy with his experience level. I don't know, $5 million a year somewhere in that vicinity. So something that I think is kind of interesting, Aaron Rodgers has spoken about what it's like for him to have sort of aged out of the locker room quite mm -hmm. a bit this season. Uh, it's, it's something that I think you've talked about too. We've all sort of thought about it. What does it mean for him to have a coach that's only a handful of so, years older So LaFleur's 39, He's Rogers, 30, 38, 39. And Rodgers is 35, so probably three and a half year difference somewhere in there. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons that teams like uh, younger head coaches is they, they do relate to the players better. And so maybe this will help there. Now Rodgers is old enough where if somebody's in his mid to late 40s, you know, they have more in common than, he, you know, if Rodgers were 25. But uh, you know, the, that could cut both ways. You know, there could be, uh, you know, how much will Rodgers respect him walking into the door? We don't know that. But, you know, being around the same age could help with just the communication. And, you know, they have the same, uh, you know, they grew up in the same eras, basically. So um, that could that could help. I'm guessing, um, like someone just said there, Rodgers is excited. I would think he would be happy about this. Um, you know, when you when he when it all when he aired after the Buffalo game that he didn't that he didn't like the game plan going in and that basically he wasn't happy with McCarthy's offense. That Thursday night the Rams had beaten the Vikings thirty eight to thirty or thirty one on Thursday night T V. Rogers later said he watched part of that game. I have to think that was on his mind in that Buffalo game was he wanted to play for someone like Shanahan or McVeigh and now he's got his chance. Yeah, no for sure. Someone had asked Brent had asked whether or not uh, LaFleur will be bringing anyone over from Tennessee with him. Again, not something that we know necessarily, but he's got connections for several from several different teams he that does. he's worked with in um, the past. Now they are, I was talking with someone who works down there and I think they, the only person they let go was their strength and conditioning coach. So all their other coaches, they just hired Vrabel last year, so I think we can safely assume all their other assistants are under contract. They don't have to let any of those guys leave. The only job you have to let a guy leave for is the head coaching position. So 
uh, maybe they'll put the gabosh if he tries to hire any of those assistants, or maybe there's a quality control guy that he wants to have coach receivers or some other position. Big hires, though, for quarterbacks, coach is going to be huge. Offensive line coach is a really big one because they're coaching five. They're, it's like a little team within a team. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are really important uh, jobs. Mm -hmm. And special teams, too, on the assumption that Ron Zook will not uh, be with the Packers next mm -hmm. year. Derek and others speculating about Josh McDaniels there in the comments. We see you guys. Uh, if, you would have, if you would have been asked this morning who are the safest candidates, and Tom Silverstein wrote just about this this morning, um, you probably would have said Josh McDaniels and Adam Gase were the two safest having had head coaching experience right. before, play calling experience yep. before, and now here we are We're talking about someone who is not Adam Gase or Josh McDaniels. So what could have happened in those interviews or what might have rubbed the Packers the wrong way with those? Yeah, you know, who knows? And it could be recommendations they got from other people. You know, McDaniels is a really strong personality. Maybe they would have been concerned that he and Rodgers would actually clash instead of uh, having that be a dynamic relationship. Maybe they thought it would be destructive. Maybe it was a really close call for him. Um, I think what it seems like, you know, when you hear these, uh, these guys describe uh, their hirings, not necessarily right afterwards, but years later, there's just something that happens in the interview. It's like a gut feeling. There's just something that makes them think this is the guy. And so maybe that's what happened with LaFleur. There was just something early in the interview in the first 15 minutes where he just said something that, that they were like, okay, I think this is this looks like the guy that, that we're going to hire. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do not know who, his, who he will bring in to be his coach, his assistant coaches and whatnot, but a lot of people asking about Ron Zook already. Yeah. Um, so we will see in the coming days I if he chooses think to we, got, we have to assume that Zook is gone. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. There's a lot of petting questions. We addressed that earlier, but it does sound like he's keeping Petten on, which means probably a lot, if not the entire defensive staff, will be back. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we'll take a few more questions from you guys. Um, he, uh, yes. why, did, why did he go from the Rams to the Titans? Because with, with the Rams, although he was offensive coordinator, Sean McVay was calling plays. And so when the Titans called and said he'd be the play calling coordinator because Rabel's a defensive guy, uh, McVay let him out of the contract. From the quotes you see from McVay, he basically said, you know, people have helped me in my career by letting me move on. Uh, so he wanted to do the same. He said he didn't want to let the guy go and he may regret it later, but that he just thought it was only fair to let him give him a shot at calling plays. Uh, I just saw a question. I'm going to scroll up here. Mike wants to know if Joe Philbin could be back. Is that a possibility that LaFleur would bring him in on as offensive coordinator? I guess, you know, my kind of gut reaction is unlikely. But, um, you know, I don't know if they know each other at all. Um, you know, you never could rule out. Maybe you'd have Philbin be his offensive line coach. Uh, that's that's Joe's a lot of Joe's background is offensive line and tight ends. So, um I just don't know. I guess my guess would be no, uh, especially because you know Joe had a chance to be interim coach, and I don't know if you know he might just think it's just be a bad dynamic to have a guy who coached the team remain on the staff. But um, you never know. Mm -hmm. No, it's uh, something interesting to kick around yeah. some of these things. Yeah, uh, there's lots going to happen in the next two or three weeks here. Lots, yes. lots going on. Oh, oh yes, lots to look forward to. Um, some people in the comments have also been talking about. Is this the beginning of a mini rebuild for the Packers? Can Matt LaFleur take the team that he's going to be given, no matter what shape or form that it's in this upcoming season, and take them to the playoffs? Is that a possibility for the Packers? You know, it looks like a, uh, a mini rebuild. Like, you know, he's a young guy, never been a head coach. One year is a, a play caller, so you would think there, there's going to be a learning curve there. I'd have to go back and look at Matt Nagy's history, but he never even was calling plays, right? And yet, you know, the Bears had a good first season with him. So you never know. A lot to, will depend on what kind of draft they have. And if they get, uh, if they can land a difference maker or two in the draft, then that changes, you know, the way things look. But those, are, those guys are hard to find. Um, but can you take them to the playoffs? McCarthy won 8-8 eight eight his first year. And um, second year, 07, they were in the champion, NFC Championship game. Um, that's probably the more realistic or likely scenario if, if, for best case for these guys. But um, you never know. So there's lots of mixed reactions from you guys in the comments. A lot of people who are excited, looking forward to a new era, but there are some people in there that are a little skeptical about the fact that he's never had a head coaching position. Is that something to be concerned about? Well, you know, you just you can't – I mean, only these guys have to be a head coach sometime, and you just never know who's going to succeed, so I don't think that's either good or bad. 
Um, and someone was asking because his offenses, his offense was not good this year. I think they were was it 25th in points and 27th in yards or vice versa. Not a good first year, but Mariota was also playing with a, a nerve injury in his elbow and neck that flared up several times, and he's lost feeling in his hands, and he had to wear a glove a lot of the season. So you can call that a mitigating circumstance, just like when Mike McCarthy had uh, rookie Alex Smith as his, off, as his quarterback in 05 when San Francisco finished last in the league in yards and 30th in points, and yet Ted Thompson still hired him to be his head coach in 06. So no matter what we say, <laughs> no matter what anyone says, nobody knows. Nobody's going to have any idea until this guy gets in there. We might not know at the end of next season whether or not it's going to be Aaron Nagler had a not. tweet not too long ago that basically said everybody's going to have their opinions about whether this is a good mm. hire or not, and the truth is none of us knows. And Aaron was speaking the truth there. Good words, wise words from Aaron. So we'll find out. We'll find out if he's going to be any good. It'll be a couple years from now. Might be, yeah. So yeah. maybe come back in a few years. Uh, <laughs> we'll have some more thoughts for you then. But of course, also come back throughout the week because I'm sure press conference likely to happen this week. So we'll keep you guys updated on all of that. Packersnews.com, of course, as always. Definitely be following us on all of our social media pages. We'll keep you guys in the loop with all of the latest updates. We'll probably be live again at some point once they make this final for sure. So we'll see you guys probably pretty soon. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Have a good night.